If there is a pay gap, why don't companies hire more women? Well, the interviewer asked me when I was going to settle down. It is usually concerns about risk of pregnancy, or concern that women with existing children are less dedicated to the job because they have to work within set hours dictated by pick up and drop off of kids, plus they often get called away when kids need picked up for being sick etc. or just the belief that women can't do the job as well, they would never say this in those words but it's very clear based on comments on interviewees. Husband's ex-boss once told him he was never hiring a woman again because of the pregnancy thing. In the vast majority of instances, most large corporations adhere to EEO laws that have been around since the 70s. Zero laws prevent discussion of salary among employees and make it illegal for employers to stop workers from discussing this. Salaries become business agreements as you climb the corporate ladder and those who play the political game well often make more. It's not just a question of hiring more women. It's also a question of the position these women are hired at. Example, a large majority of my team is made of women, and women and men are paid the same salary at the same job level. However, we have a massive pay gap. Why is that? The simple truth is that the senior leadership of the company and immediately reporting roles are all middle-aged, white, men, and because part of what is called the pay gap is the unwillingness of many employers to hire women. Main reason given usually is the fear that they'll become pregnant and therefore they'll be considered an economic risk. Now I will say that depending on your place of residence and companies involved, chances are that there already is little to no gap within your place of work, i.e. women that do get to work the same position as a man will receive equal pay. But women might still be treated differently when it comes to promotions and pay grade assign. Let's make a theory here and make an analogy with the efficient market hypothesis. I'm improvising this stuff, so please don't bite my head off. The first assumption we can easily make is that the output, as in value generated, of male and female employees are the same. Secondly. There's a widespread assumption that women are more risky workers because they might get pregnant and fall out of the workforce, or their child can get sick and that would also affect them more than their male counterparts. Due to unequal household responsibilities which is sadly a very real problem even nowadays. So in order for women employees to have the same risk-reward ratio as men while having the same output and still be an equally good investment you would have to get them cheaper thus moving this investment back onto the market line this would explain the wage gap in economic terms this is where your question comes into play so far what we established is that women put out the same value for a lower cost which is due to them being riskier the same value for the same price but with higher risk would be a worse investment than men. A possible answer to your question by this logic is that there is still risk. And companies generally don't like risk in their workforce. In other words, getting workers cheaper only mitigates their higher risk, but even though seemingly it makes it an equal investment, the investor can prefer stability over a discount. Because women don't get paid less per hour than men. It would be illegal to pay your women workers less than your men workers for the same work. If I remember correctly it's called the Equal Work for Equal Pay Act and it also makes it illegal. For employers to stop employees from discussing pay. Men tend to earn more over their lifetimes because men tend to work more overtime and the lack of. Things like maternity leave. I won't add to everything others have said about how much of the gap is due to things like preferences for different type of work, maternity versus paternity leave entitlement gaps plus the time needed off for pregnancy itself etc. The issue with your solution, at least at companies I've been at, is this if you make new hires say 80% women, you will potentially actually increase the gender pay gap at your company. This is because most new hires are done at a more junior level so now you've actually decreased 
The average salary a woman earns at your company because the senior well-paying positions are say 6,040 or 7,030 men, and the lower-paying junior positions are the opposite. Because women are viewed as less competent, and they might get prego. I had someone ask me, wouldn't you rather stay home and raise kids? Quote, people, mostly men, still believe women don't belong in the workplace and aren't reliable due to parenting responsibilities. You have to remember, part of the pay gap stems from hiring staff assuming men are more capable workers deserving higher pay. I think we all need to think harder about where issues come from. Not that they just exist mathematically. It is proven that women are paid less than men even controlling four hours worked. Experience and job type. The real question to ask is what is the underlying source of this mathematical truth? And my answer, based on all the evidence I have seen, is that the biases that lead companies to pay women less are the same ones that bias them to hire men. The gender pay gap is a complex issue influenced by various factors, including discrimination, occupational segregation, and societal norms. The question of why companies don't hire more women if there is a pay gap implies that companies could save money by paying women less than men for the same work. Here are some reasons why this line of reasoning might not lead to companies hiring more women. 1. Discrimination and unconscious bias. Unconscious biases and stereotypes can influence hiring decisions. Employers may not be aware of their own biases and may unintentionally favor male candidates over equally qualified female candidates. Additionally, some companies may be reluctant to hire women due to concerns about maternity leave or the perceived need for more flexible work arrangements. 2. Occupational segregation. Certain industries have a higher concentration of male or female workers, which can contribute to the pay gap. For example, Women are more likely to work in lower-paying fields like education and healthcare, while men are more likely to work in higher-paying fields like technology and engineering. Even within industries, women may be underrepresented in higher-paying positions. 3. Societal and cultural factors. Societal expectations and gender roles can impact women's career choices leading them to pursue lower-paying jobs or take time off for family responsibilities. The pay gap is also influenced by factors such as the unequal distribution of unpaid labor, e.g., childcare, housework, which disproportionately affects women. 4. Lack of awareness and transparency. Many companies may not be aware of their own pay gaps or may not prioritize addressing them. Additionally, a lack of pay transparency can make it difficult for employees to know if they are being paid fairly, making it harder for women to negotiate higher salaries or take legal action against unequal pay. 5. Legal and regulatory factors. Laws and regulations aimed at reducing the gender pay gap have been implemented in many countries. But enforcement can be inconsistent and penalties for non-compliance may not be strong enough to incentivize companies to change their practices. It's important to note that the gender pay gap is a multifaceted issue, and addressing it requires a combination of policy interventions, workplace initiatives, and cultural shifts. Efforts to close the pay gap include promoting pay transparency, implementing family-friendly workplace policies, encouraging women to pursue careers in higher paying fields, and raising awareness about unconscious bias and discrimination. It's a complex socio-economic question. So for North America, where I am more familiar with, women even though they are majority of college degree earners now, tend to gravitate toward jobs which overall pay less than jobs that men gravitate toward with similar education levels, and we have examples in women-dominate fields, 
such as nursing. Men will tend to out-earn women here as well. Even though are few male nurses, the jobs they tend to pick in that field tend to be specializations, which pay more. Like x-ray tech or anesthesiologist, women will also prioritize other things instead of pay. Women are more likely to choose a lower payer job. It means not moving. Women are more likely to choose a lower paying job if it means not working on weekend. Women are more likely to choose a lower paying job if it means not working at night. Men are more likely to move for higher pay. Men are more likely to take longer commutes for higher pay. Men are more likely to work weekends for higher pay. Men are more likely to work night for higher pay. Why do women choose this? Some of it, being primary child caretaker. Nights and weekend is when the kids are home. Some of it, is the perception of more danger. Not wanting to work graveyard. And some of it just preference. Women are less likely to move and less likely to choose a longer commute for more pay. Because they value not moving and they value less commute. There has been a long-running study trying to figure out why women have a harder time getting programming jobs. And my Google foo is failing as I can't find it. The study randomized names and also blank names. The study also involved voice interviewers with randomized pitch. It was going through a lot of effort to make it so the hiring company can't tell if they're interviewing men or a woman. And the study has shown, with all that woman, are still being hired less and still not gaining as much pay with their male peers in terms of years of experience. From what the study could tell, women negotiate less aggressively than men and women also more willing to give up on a job prospect and try something else. Why do women not negotiate as aggressive as men? And why do they not attempt gaining the same job? There isn't a simple answer to that. My company works the revenue cycle for hospitals. Making sure money comes in from insurance. 10,000 plus employees. 90% of supervisors and below are female. 90% of managers and up. E. I. Executives. Are male. The women are doing the real work yet don't even get paid a livable wage. The pay gap exists for the same reason they don't hire more women sexism because the pay gap is a phenomenon of experience and ability not gender women without kids basically don't have a gap it's only exists significantly if you don't adjust for experience i.e it is a function of the average woman spending more time out of the workforce or settling for less money because a job is more flexible closer to home etc the actual pay gap for equivalent jobs and experience is a low single-digit percentage. Which is probably just a function of men either negotiating more aggressively, being more willing to switch jobs for a pay increase, or accept worse working conditions, commute, etc., for more money. It's illegal to pay someone less due to age, sex, race, etc. Because it would be too obvious that they are illegally underpaying women when there's less men and more women. Because it's an intrinsic bias they don't fully recognize most of the time. They don't want to hire women they are perceived as less competent. Less available. More flaky. Will leave more, need more time off for childcare. Etc. However when they do hire a woman. The ones that really, wow them, they take all of these stupid things into consideration to offer lower pay. It's not a conscious thought of, she's a woman so I will pay her less, it's more of a subconscious viewing of her contributions and successes as less than that of a man's. Even if they're identical, and with all the stress she will put you through by being less competent, leaving more etc. that you pay her what you believe her to be worth. Which is less than what a man with identical qualifications will be worth to the employer. This is a very layered problem. Working in the tech field. 
It's just math that the candidate pool from the beginning is mostly male. To top it off, because women have usually been unfairly scrutinized since university, many women have a habit of not applying to roles or leaving out details on CVs because they didn't meet a majority of the job requirements or didn't do the thing enough. While many men apply to the same roles having barely done the things they put in their CV and be sing their way to the hiring manager. It's frustrating for hiring managers to be honest I would prefer that at least the hiring pool is adjusted so that managers can see a pool equally represented by men and women. Or if necessary, have gender hidden until the final interview. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.